Hello and welcome back to Tesla News. My name is Marian and I'm your host today and I'm glad to have you back here on my channel. If you're new here or you didn't subscribe yet, do consider doing so so you're not missing anything coming from Giga Berlin or Tesla in general. I'm glad to have you here and we start with the update I have for you. The information I have currently are from people working inside the factory, so um, just please consider that I cannot share everything, but what I can share I will do. And it is pretty clear that Tesla is testing already a lot of things inside. So first of all, the official date of starting the production again is going to be the 25th of July. So on Monday for the next work week, we're going to see production again. So it wasn't exactly the two weeks um, that we expected, but it's going to start on the 25th again. The second information I have for you is that inside the factory they are testing the 4680 battery pack. So I do believe they have received that from the United States just for testing how it is working. But um, just very important for you if you're from Europe, this doesn't mean that they will receive 4680 battery packs from the United States and start producing that version here. They're going to wait until the factory is done here. So that is very important to understand. They are just testing inside to um, kind of get a feeling for the uh, production process itself because it's going to change by the end of the year or beginning next year um, once we have the 4680 battery packs being produced inside Giga Berlin. So this is a good sign that Tesla is preparing itself. And uh, furthermore, there's actually a standard range variant. So it's very, very similar to the one in China with the only difference that you're not having a dual motor like in the United States. You're just having pretty much the same version, Model Y standard range like in China, just not with the LFP battery as they sell it over there, just with the 4680 battery pack. So that is what I can share with you from inside the factory. Again, they are also working on the structural battery pack. Um, the front side, that, that part, the first part in the front um, was coming from China before. Now they are having it as well inside the factory over here. So that is the update I can give you. Um, further updates are actually coming as well from CATL. Just important to consider there's no proof yet that the M3P battery is actually going to go into a Tesla car. But we do know that Tesla is actually having a um, great relationship with CATL. They are receiving a lot of batteries from them. They are a big customer. So there is quite a chance that this battery, which is having a higher energy density of between 15 to 20 percent, that actually it could happen that Tesla is introducing that battery pack into a Model 3 in the future. Um, CATL is saying here that they're going to start putting that inside cars by next year. So this is maybe an update we're going to see by next year in a Model 3. So excited to see that as well, as well as Vuva. We're going to look into the footage here and updates for the shipping to Europe. So we currently have a total of two ships on their way to Europe. It's the Morning Chorus and the Glavis Summit. And we have another ship that is already closer to Europe. We don't know yet which one exactly it is, but a lot of people received a VIN number, as you guys have as well uh, mentioned down in the comment section. Very important to understand for the ship that we are currently seeing here. It doesn't really look like a ship that is actually going to Europe because it's not like the regular candidate we have. But what we are seeing is that Tesla is changing its strategy. They are moving the cars um, not with personal up here. They are just moving it directly with their trucks here. So it's much more efficient, much faster. Um, it makes a lot of sense. And I do have the feeling that the parking lot is pretty stacked full. So they have to push them here to the front side. But I think we are waiting here for another ship arriving maybe tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. There are a few candidates that could actually arrive and then we have already all the cars up here to immediately load the ship um, to move it to Europe. So um, that is the news we have from Shanghai. No more updates. We still have to wait for footage that proves that the production has been really moving forward again. Talking about production and the financial results we have seen in the past two days, um, after the earnings call, Tesla stock has been rising a lot, which is no big surprise. 
Um, and here we have the Tesla deliveries per year with a forecast. So I do believe that Tesla, if they are really having no hurdles like um, a lockdown in Shanghai or any challenges, for example, in Giga Berlin and Austin, I believe based on the words we have heard regarding the 2170 battery pack, if they use that battery pack and they do have a lot of them, and then I think we can see some major, major growth in production in the two new factories till the end of the year. And that means that we could actually really see a major, major delivery output in the Q4 numbers and which could put Tesla ahead and uh, actually move them towards 1.5 million, which would be close to the 50% uh, growth rate that they were expecting to do. So that is also great news. And Tesla is actually moving as well forward to do other things. So um, they have actually changed a lot their online store. They have um, really put a lot of products over there and they are changing their um, way of how you uh, buy a car. And this is um, very well seen if you look at the wall connector. Um, you have now the ability to actually buy the wall connector while you are currently choosing your Tesla. So it's actually no surprise that Tesla does that and it's a nice way to do that. But again, they are really trying to um, change the buying behavior and the buying experience. So you're not only buying a car, but you're also buying some sort of um, other products with your car. And that is the important experience we are talking about. Then we have some speculations about something that I would find pretty interesting if Tesla would do that. It's like a Tesla Prime version, like, like the Amazon Prime version. We know all very well. And um, Chris Cheng is saying here, Tesla may be able to launch a Tesla Prime memberships where Tesla and content and service providers can negotiate partnerships. And he is pretty much saying, well, if you're having a Tesla Prime, you could get a discount on insurance. You can get a discount when it comes to repairs or maintenance, um, maybe pay a lower fee for the FSD package. Um, you can get uh, discounts in the shop or maybe even at superchargers, you could get like a price discount if you're like a Tesla Prime um, customer. So what do you think about Tesla Prime? Do you think that would actually be a major way um, yeah, to do business? Um, we do know it's very competitive and I think it would be something that no one else has in that way um, in the auto industry. And I think um, Tesla could really differentiate itself from this model. So thank you very much for being here today. I really appreciate your time. If you do like my channel and the information you receive from Europe and you would like not to miss anything anymore in the future, do consider subscribing to my channel. Um, for those speaking German and listening to this here, you can also find me on Tesla Supply, my podcast. So thank you very much for being here today. I really appreciate that and have a wonderful day.